Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create particles and a couple ways you can create particles. I have an animated texture for particles that we will be using for this texture and then I also got a glitter one texture which will just be for our solid texture that we'll be using for particles. Now the we can use animated textures like this to basically generate a animated cycle strip like you would with blocks or items. So we'll be doing that today as well. Now if we move over to Amp Creator, I already have a texture for a block that we'll be running it from. And what you want to do is import a other texture. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set our glitter one, our solid texture for our, anim our, our non-animated texture. So we're just gonna import that as other. And then if you wanna create an animated texture for your particles, then you wanna go and create a animated texture, import strip. You also have a few other options. You can import frames from template. That would be individual frames, I think, for this one. There's also a GIF frame thing that you can import as well. And then we want to select our animated texture. I have this set to Glitter 2. And you don't need to worry about the speed or anything right here. You can just export it as other. And we're going to call it Glitter 2. And that will be good. So after we have that all sorted out, what we can do is exit out of the animated editor. And then we should have glitter one and glitter two for particle textures. What we need to do is click, go to mod elements and then click on the green plus icon. Then we'll go down to particle. Where is it? Right there. And then we'll set the particle to whatever name that we want. This name can't repeat with other elements in your mod. It's not displayed to the player, so it doesn't really matter what you give it. I'm just gonna call it glitter one, and this will be our glitter one texture. The first option that we need to do is import our texture. This is glitter one, so we're just using a solid texture. Now below that, we have the option to enable animation. So if it's animated, we can enable this. If it's not animated, then we don't need to worry about the setting below. Basically, rendering type is the type of rendering that the particle will have. Peg is basically a solid texture. It has no lighting and it doesn't support transparency. Translucent supports transparency, but and lit basically allows it to glow. We're going to be using lit for this one. The particles a visual scale is basically an offset to resize your particles. You go higher, then the particle will get larger. If you go lower, then the particle size will get lower or smaller. We're going to leave this at one. The particle bounding box is basically the outer boundary of which the particle will collide with specific objects if the particle has collision enabled. So down here, you enable this checkbox here. Does particle collide? This will also play with the bounding box of the particular particle. Followed by that, we have the speed factor for input speed. Now this basically controls the when the gravity basically is enabled. So to enable the gravity, we'll get into that in just a sec but if the gravity is enabled then what we'll do is we'll need to adjust the speed if we want to one should be default and lower the speed by increasing the number we can also increase it if we want to to enable gravity there this is a negative or positive number it can go up and it will increase the gravity i think for the particular block so it falls if you lower it i think it might float so we'll try the floating particle and by using negative 0.5. The particle maximum age, now particles have a default lifespan and then will despawn in X amount of ticks. We can control the amount of ticks that it will basically show itself for. 20 ticks is generally one second. We can set it to 40 for two, two seconds. And the setting below that, how much can age vary per particle? This basically allows the particle to randomly age based on on the from anywhere from a lower number to our maximum a ticks so if we set this to 20 that's one second to two seconds that the age might last for always show this particle now this will affect if the client has minimum particles enabled if it is then the, if this is checked it will still show if that setting is basically set to minimum particles. Uh, you can leave this unchecked if you don't want it. And does particle collide? Basically, this just 
means that particle will collide with any other bounding box such as blocks or other things like that. So you can leave that enabled and you can also use additional particle expire condition so you can basically tell it when to basically basically uh, despawn and stuff like that through additional conditions if you want to. After that just make sure to save it and uh, then you should be all set up. So we're actually going to make two particles. So we're going to duplicate the particle. We're going to call it litter 2 and all our settings are pretty much set up we can edit this and then we're going to select our animated texture we're going to enable animation and then we're going to set this to 12. this is just for a slower animation speed i noticed that it was good for at basically the speed of 12 so we can the animated texture frame duration controls the speed of how fast or slow the particle actually shows. So when you have all that all set up, what you want to do is just save your particle and then we're going to go into a block. We're going to get it to show. So if we want the block to show, we're going to go to triggers. We're going to run it from the client side, client, display random tick and we're going to basically create a procedure here. We're then going to spawn a single particle and we're going to spawn two of them. We're going to actually spawn our glitter one and glitter two. And we can offset the coordinates if we want to as well. By default, the spawn single particle at X, Y, and Z is at the axis point. So if we want to centralize the particle, what we need to do is actually offset these particular numbers. So to do that, what we need to do is go to a math operator, we're going to grab a, and then we're going to need a math operator, and then we're going to also need the number, and then we're going to set this to 0 0.25 and then we're going to grab our x and we're going to place that down right here and we're just going to duplicate that a little a couple more times and probably one more would be just fine so we'll do that and then what we want to do is duplicate this a couple more times so one and then what we're going to do is we're going to do 75 and then we're going to do 75 and then we're going to do 0 0.75 again for both coordinates down here. So that will offset it somewhere around the middle of that particular block. And what we also want to do is we're going to spawn a single particle, but this time we're going to, for a glitter one, we're just gonna duplicate this and we're gonna go 0 0.5 and we're going to offset that again. And we're gonna select a X coordinate. We're gonna go 0 0.5, so it's directly in the middle. So you can basically set the velocity how you want. By default, the velocity is set to one. You can and change that if you want to. Basically what's happening here, we're telling the particles to spawn on the block at a offsetted axis. So the glitter one will be spawning in the middle where the following glitter two particles will be spawning roughly just offsetted about four pixels inwards from the actual actual block itself. So it's gonna be contained. It'll look pretty cool that way. So after you've got all that set up, what you can do is just save that and save our block and then we're good to go. So let's hop into game. We have the block, we're in game, and if we place it down in a few seconds, the particles will randomly shoot off from the top of the block. As you can see, they're pretty much in the center of the block and they will float up. Now you can control the velocity of the speed of basically how much the block will make the particles float up that way. So we can set this to a lower number so it doesn't go so fast into the sky itself. To do that, we just need to set the velocity to something a little bit lower. So if we go back to our procedure, we can set this to something like 0 0.1 and it will go a lot slower. So we'll do that and then we'll hop back in game and I'll show you how that'll. So they are still going pretty fast, but they're at a slower interval now. So as you can see that they're going up quite well, but uh, it's still pretty fast. So we might even want to set this to zero. If we can set that to zero, we will do go that right now. So we'll set all the velocity to zero and this should control, uh, basically allow the particle to have control over the speed factor of the particular particle. So we'll basically cut back in and then go into. So even though that we basically set our velocity speed to zero, as you can see, the particles are still going up in the sky. To fix that, what you want to do is actually go to your particles in M Crater and under speed uh, factor right down here, you want to set this to a lower number or something like 0.12 or something like that. And that will make it a lot slower for speed. This basically controls the overall velocity of the particles. So hopefully you guys found this 
tutorial useful. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.